Okay, I've just calmed down a little bit. So, great news, my bike finally showed up. Except, it's damaged. Oh, you're over here this morning. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. If you've been around on the channel for a while, you know that I've always had a motorcycle with me. When I originally went on the road, I had my 2018 KTM 500 EXCF, the orange bike. Beautiful, beautiful bike. I bought that brand new back when I was still in my house. Had been uh, financing it, making payments on it for a while. And after, uh, after having that bike for about two years, I had come to the decision that it just wasn't the right bike for me. It was, it was much, much too powerful. Beautiful bike. I mean, that's top of the line. Uh, that's best in its class motorcycle. Much too much power for me. So I sold it on and took the proceeds, paid off the loan, took the remaining balance and bought that Kawasaki. I had the 2018 uh, KLX 250, the kind of camo gray colored one. And that bike really was good for me. It, it let me uh, kind of get my legs back under me and feel really secure and practice my riding. And it's a great bike. It's a really super high quality, very low maintenance bike. Uh, whereas the KTM required very frequent oil changes, very high maintenance. The Kawasaki was very low maintenance. So I kept that um, not quite a year and kind of knew that it was just an interim bike. It, it didn't quite have enough power for me. So uh, similar to Goldilocks, and somebody left this comment before, uh, I want to find the one that's just right. One was too fast, one was too slow. And so now I'm hoping that I found the one that's right in the middle. And that's why we've been in New York. The reason we were here for so long was because the bike that I had bought was delayed. It was originally supposed to be in June. So I came back in uh, early May, planning to spend five or six weeks here, do some work on the rig, uh, get my new bike when it showed up and then hit the road. Well, that turned into uh, what? 10 weeks that we've been here now. So really an extra month and more uh, is the reason why we've been in New York for so long. Well, yesterday uh, a big uh, truck pulled up and dropped off my new bike. Now this bike is a bit interesting. This is not from one of the big manufacturers like Honda or Suzuki or Kawasaki or Yamaha or KTM or Husqvarna. This is called a GPX Moto and this is a, a 250 size. So GPX Moto is a brand. They're imported from China. Uh, what they are is a very close approximation or copy of a KTM as far as the, the body and the frame and, and the wheels and, and all of the, the hard parts on the bike are really a copy of a KTM. In fact, you can buy some KTM parts and bolt them right on to this one. So they did a good job. So I ordered this back in March, early March, and sold the Kawasaki in anticipation of coming back here in June uh, to pick up this bike. Well, now here we are, what's the middle of July, end of July, last week of July. The bike shows up yesterday and there's a problem. Wait, waited all these weeks, months, bike shows up yesterday, and I'm the lucky one that got the shipping damage. I, I shot some video yesterday, but I can't use it because I was so disappointed, frustrated. I see all these guys posting on the Facebook group, their bikes showed up, their crates are beautiful. My crate looked like it went through World War II. So this is what happened. This cross beam support that's supposed to be bolted here the bolt was just hanging here. The beam came loose. This is a holding bar here. The welds broke for the support bar and these jagged ends of metal scraped against 
some items up here and the frame down here. If you can see that. And so my disappointment level when I saw that, I I almost I almost cried. I mean, I really almost cried. A big part, you guys know me. A big part of my MO and my psyche is things have to look really good, right? You guys see when I do the work on my rig, I always make things look really good. That's for me it has to be that way or else I'm uncomfortable. I will if there's a flaw that is the thing that I will look at every time I walk by something. And just and so I know that about myself and I accept that, right? I accept that I have that that quirk and things have to be just so, really perfect. And so to see my beautiful beautiful new bike, it's a gorgeous gorgeous machine to see it show up in haggard condition like this almost brought me to tears I was so frustrated and disappointed on top of that the the this is the box that contains all the small parts this is pretty standard this is my seventh bike in a box that I've bought over the years this one, and I don't want to say it was my biggest gamble, but this is my biggest bike in a box purchase as far as monies and what's really on the line here. I mean, this is now going to become part of my permanent, my permanent rig for full-time travel. This is going to find its home on the back, on my MX hauler, on the back of the rig. So this is a big part of my life this bike. So I had a lot at stake when I ordered this bike and sat here and waited and waited and waited for it to show up. And so for it to show up not in perfect condition crushed me. I mean it's it's still I had a hard time getting to sleep last night. <laughs> so the initial inspection before I had even lifted the cardboard off of the crate, I knew that their parts had had fallen out the bottom because the truck driver alerted me to it. You could look, there was a hole in the cardboard right down here and you could see all these parts and stuff laying in here, which obviously is not right. So I took some pictures of that and I shot an email off to Gary Goodwin, who is the importer of these bikes. He runs a shop called USA Motor Toys and he is the sole importer of the GPX Moto into the US. Now I actually had contact with Gary. I bought a bike off of him some years ago. If you remember in some of my early, early videos, in the background, you would see motorcycles in my living room. And I'm pretty certain that you would have caught in a glimpse of, it was a small little, it was a clone of the old Honda Trail 70s. You remember back in the day with the funny handlebars that you could lower? Everybody my age knows those. I bought that, it's a brand called Pitster, and Gary is the importer of Pitster. So back in, I don't know what year it was. I bought that little bike as a little fun thing and put a license plate on it and used to, did all kinds of modifications to it and zipped it around town and all that. And then ultimately I sold it on when, when I was done playing with it. But So Gary, I, unbeknownst to me, when I went to buy the GPX Moto, same guy that I had had contact with back, back when I bought that bike. So yesterday when I sent that email to him about, about possible missing parts down here, and there are missing parts. There's only three blankers. There's supposed to be four, obviously. So I just gave him a heads up and I told him once I get it all unpacked, I'll let him know exactly what we're looking at. Well, he called me. But between the time that I sent the first email and when he called me, I actually opened up the crate, took the cardboard off, and saw this damage up here. So that's when I, I took a bunch of photos. I sent him a second email. And mind you, I'm, I'm shaking. I'm so... I'm so frustrated when all this is going on. So I sent him a second email. I stopped. I didn't I didn't unpack it any more than that. In addition to this up here being all messed up, this tie down, this is supposed to be around the foot peg. There's one on each side 
they wrap, this is like rubber coated wire, real thick. They wrap it around, they twist it to really cinch the bike down. Well, that's how this one was right here. And to me, that right there, something hit that and ripped it off. So I'm thinking forklift, pallet jack. So somebody just wasn't giving any shits about moving this bike around. And because of that, thank you, because of that, I get a bike with battle scars. So Gary calls me. He had only seen the first email. Says he can send out the missing parts, no problem. And I and then I said, it sounds like you haven't seen my second email, that it's worse than just some missing parts. And so he's looking at the photos I sent, and he goes, well, I can, I can send you uh, the, the handlebar clamp. You know, this is, this obviously is just beat to crap. He, so he can send me a new handlebar mount. He can send me a new triple clamp, which is this black assembly here that holds the forks in place because it got all marred up. So what I'm doing today, I'm getting it all unpacked. I got to figure out what else I think might be missing because I don't know because I don't know what was supposed to be here. There's no parts list or anything. This is an enthusiast motorcycle. If you're buying one of these, you're okay with assembling it, partially assembling it yourself. You're okay with not having step-by-step -step instructions. You're a kind of guy that's a get it done guy. That's the kind of people that are buying these bikes, which I am. I'm okay putting this together. I mean, it's a basic motorcycle with handlebars and switches and wheels and stuff, but I don't know what is missing. I think I'm missing some front wheel bearing spacer bushings kind of thing because there's nothing anywhere that I'm finding. The poor parts box, totally empty. All of its contents dumped out, which means this thing got squeezed enough because the box was right up in here is where they packed it. I'm going to replace the handlebar mounts because they're really bad the top triple clamp also and then for this right here I'm gonna paint this I'm gonna get in here with some sandpaper feather it all out these scratches and then just hit it with some semi-gloss it looks like semi-gloss black it's not super glossy just so because there's actually bare metal here it went right down through all the paint and everything right down to the bare metal so I got to get that covered up so we don't have rust and that should get me back to holes so i feel like the bike will fit with what i need you know in summary i got really frustrated yesterday because this was such so much hinged on the success of this bike showing up so much um because it is such a big part of my life it's not just a weekend bike that sits in my garage it travels with me seven days a week all year it's what I will use to make runs into town, to pick up groceries. So it's a really important part of my life. And I, I just, I need it to be perfect for me. And so excited to have the bike and, and really still very excited to have the bike. I can't wait to get up on it and try it out. For those of you that know, it's a two stroke. The engine is based off of a Yamaha engine that used to be manufactured. It's a beautiful looking carbureted two-stroke bike that just takes me back. Just looking at a two-stroke takes me back to the days when I was a kid and rode two-stroke dirt bikes. So I'm really excited about that. I haven't been on a two-stroke in, well, my last two-stroke was a KX250 back in 2009. So it's been over a decade since I've been on a two stroke. Very excited. So this bike, two stroke pipe, good forks, good rear shock. It's got a lot going on and I'm so excited to own it. And I'm really excited to share it with you guys once I get it up and running. I've got a lot better camera gear now so I can do ride-along videos with y'all. So I'm looking forward to that too. Some good video and audio of me riding the bike and exploring where we go 
across the country. So the plan now is get this thing together. Gary's gonna send me the parts I'm gonna need to make it whole again. I've got the engine work that we're doing, the belt and the pulleys and all that, and the air conditioning compressor. So I'm looking at, I'm gonna say 10 days and we're hitting the road. I hope you're here with us when we do that. I know you will be. Let me shift gears here real quick and give you an update on Lefty. Lefty is doing great. His paw is tremendously better. The swelling has gone down quite a bit. I don't know if you can see how it's tinted kind of blue. Twice a day we're doing a medicated 10 minute soak on his paw. It's a blue colored, uh, it's, I think it's just like an antiseptic kind of uh, medicated soak. So I dilute it 20 to one in a little bag of water and then slip his paw down in that in some warm water for 10 minutes twice a day. He's taken uh, antibiotics and pain pills every day. Uh, he's he's back to full i mean he has been for days now he he it, it doesn't seem to be bothering him at all as far as any kind of pain he's not treating it gingerly or anything he's full on 100 percent. i can't let him be that you can see that it's still swollen and see the redness between his two toes there that actually um, formed a little kind of ulcer looking sore on there, but it has gotten better in the last couple days. He's fine. Like right now, I just gave him the soak bath, the medicated foot soak. I don't have any kind of cover on it. I'm letting it air for a while and dry. I've been keeping socks on there. So I sacrificed, sacrificed a bunch of uh, ankle socks that didn't quite fit me, were a little too small. Some of them were brand new, never been worn. So I kind of cut them, cut the tops off and I've been slipping these down on his paw so they're kind of loose around it and then just securing it to his leg with some tape. And that's been fine. Um, and that's what I've been using overnight. So it's loose, so he's still getting air and everything to it. Um, so when we do go walk up the grass, I put a plastic bag over it so there's no dirts or anything getting in there. See, right now I got to get him back in the garage. I don't like him walking around without any kind of covering on there. So it's time to put his sock on. So he's doing excellent. All of you that sent some PayPal's, thank you so much. I don't have all the names, but I'll put them right here on the screen when I edit the video. So thank you all. Very appreciated for that. Everything helps everything helps when you guys send that kind of support not not just financially it helps me it helps me when you guys show that kind of support for the channel and for lefty and for me it really does help out thank you so you can see he's back on chipmunk patrol it's like nothing ever happened What you doing? All right, time to get this thing the rest of the way unpacked. Everyone, thank you for being here and watching the videos. Thanks for following along with Lefty's drama that he's had. I hope everybody's having great days, enjoying their summer. Everybody take care, be safe, and we'll see y'all again really soon.